The movie starts off in Aspen, Colorado in the year 1899. Harry Tracy is a fugitive on the run from a relentless posse. He recently committed a daring bank robbery and the posse is closing in on him. Clad only in his thermal underwear, Harry braves the waist-deep snow, searching for a means to flee. Fate takes an unexpected turn when Harry stumbles upon a horse tied to a hitching post. Seizing the opportunity, he mounts the horse and gallops out of town, leaving chaos in his wake. The owner of the horse, realizing the theft, rushes outside, gun in hand shouting, come back with my horse. As he rides along the road, a woman on skis approaches him. And the woman chastises Harry for his lack of caution. Tracy replies, you are the prettiest thing I ever saw, what's your name? She tells him, my name is Kate, something sparks between the two of them. The posse rides up. The marshal hits Tracy in the head with his gun knocking him over. The sheriff stops him from hitting him again. The two argue over who is going to take Tracy into custody. The sheriff argues that he robbed a bank in my county, so he's mine. The marshal tells the sheriff that he has been tracking Tracy since he escaped from prison in his county, so he's mine. The lawmen pull their guns on one another as they debate who gets to take Tracy to jail. While the two lawmen argue over Tracy, Kate is concerned about the, the cut on Tracy's head. She wipes the blood from his forehead and comforts him while the two lawmen decide what to do. Kate tells Tracy that she's going back to Portland, Oregon. Tracy tells her that when he breaks out of prison again, he will come to Oregon to see her. The sheriff wins the argument and takes Tracy to jail. Even though he is locked inside a jail cell, the sheriff keeps him tied to a rope so he can torment him. A reporter has been following the posse during the manhunt for Harry Tracy. As Kate is leaving the hotel, he approaches her and tells her that since she was involved in capturing the criminal, he would like to include her in his story. She tells him no. She says that she did not help capture him and that she did not approve of the way the lawman treated him. She tells the reporter that he'll be safe once he's back in prison. The reporter just smiles and tells her that if the marshal has his way, Tracy won't make it back to prison this time. He tells her, right now they've got him staked out behind the jail in his underwear and that in another hour he'll be frozen to death. Kate replies, they can't do that, the women run to check on Tracy. They start to rescue him when the sheriff approaches and asks what they are doing. Kate tells him that he could be arrested for treating a prisoner like this. The sheriff tells her that the marshal is responsible for doing this. He tells her the marshal has jurisdiction over him in this area, plus, he has the only key. Kate asks the sheriff, so where is this marshal? Kate storms into the hotel room, catching the marshal in an embarrassing situation. She will see to it that he faces murder charges. The marshal replies, who the hell are you to be telling me what to do? Kate says, I am the widow of a federal judge, and I know who to go to, to have your hide. Like starting with the governor, Tracy is removed from the post and moved back to his jail cell. Now he is wrapped in blankets with his feet soaking in warm water. He thanks Kate for saving him and tells her that he will never forget her. Kate and her friends wish Tracy well and leave the jail. They walk by the marshal, and he just gives them a hateful look. Tracy tells the marshal, what the hell's wrong with you, you're supposed to take off your hat for a lady, the marshal replies, I don't take my hat off for anybody. Then once again the marshal shows his hatred for Tracy by throwing a bucket of ice cold water on him. The marshal with several deputies take Tracy to the train station to transport him back to prison. To Tracy's surprise, Kate appears to say goodbye. As they looked at each other from afar, they both felt the connection between them. 
they put Tracy on the train and it leaves the station. Tracy tells the marshal that he has to use the water closet. While alone inside the room, Tracy removes the shackles. When he opens the door, he overpowers the deputy and takes his rifle. He tells the other deputies to drop their guns or he will shoot the deputy. Tracy pulls the emergency cord and the train comes to a stop. Tracy makes the marshal and his deputies strip down to their long johns. He tells the marshal that he should blow him to kingdom come, but I ain't never shot a man who couldn't defend himself and I ain't gonna start now. He tells them to start walking, it's a long way to Utah. Tracy takes one of the horses from the train. He tells the train engineer to leave and don't look back. The train pulls away. Tracy rides by the marshal and his men and tells them to enjoy the walk. Tracy is free once again. As he rides along enjoying his freedom, he comes upon a man standing out the cold painting a picture. The painter asks, who are you? Tracy replies, I am Harry Tracy who are you? The painter answers, you are. Harry Tracy the outlaw. I recognize you. He continues to tell Tracy that he is an artist and that he paints pictures of famous outlaws. The two of them go into the cabin to rest and get warm by the fire. The artist is fascinated by the stories of the Wild West and outlaws. He wants Tracy to tell him everything about his life. Tracy tries to tell him that this lifestyle is dying out. He tells him that he is the last of his kind. The artist does not want to accept the truth about the Wild West becoming Tam. He tells Tracy that he wants to rob a bank with him. He wants to know how it feels to be a real outlaw in the Wild West. Tracy can't convince him that the Wild West is gone. Tracy tells the artist that they will rob a train. A train will be easier and safer for them. While the artist controls the engineer, Tracy will be in the baggage car robbing the safe. Everything is going as planned. Tracy has the money and climbs on top of the car to make his way to the engine. But the engineer pulls the brake. Tracy falls and is hanging on with both hands trying not to fall from the train. All the money is blowing away in the wind. He finally gets back on top of the car as the train is coming to a stop. He jumps from the top of the train as gunfire is all around him. Tracy picked the wrong train. The gunfire is coming from lawmen on board to protect the train from outlaws. The lawmen unload their horses from the train and pursue the outlaws. The outlaws have horses waiting for them. When they see the posse coming, Tracy rides over to them and tells them that he just saw the guys running into the woods. Since robbing the train did not go very well, the two outlaws decide to try their luck robbing a bank this time. They enter the bank and ask to see the manager. Tracy tells him that, this is a holdup. The manager replies, this is the 20th century and nobody robs banks anymore. Tracy replies, then just consider this a forceful withdrawal. Tracy shows the manager a tiny bottle and tells him that it will blow the bank to pieces. The manager gives them the money. Then Tracy laughs and drinks the water that was in the tiny bottle. The only luck these two outlaws have is bad luck. A short time later they are captured by the law. Now Tracy along with his outlaw trainee are behind bars again. They both start planning their escape as soon as the door to their cell is closed. Kate reads about Tracy being captured again. She goes to the prison to visit him. She tells him that she wanted to see him once more before leaving for Portland, Oregon. Tracy tells her that when he escapes again, he is going to come and see her in Portland. 
few days later, the two outlaws make their move. They have guns hidden in the workshop. They take some prison officials captive, using them as human shields as they walk to the main gate. They are fired upon from the guards on the wall. Tracy returns fire killing one of the guards. He tells them to open the main gate. The gate is opened and the outlaws escape. To Tracy's disapproval, the artist kills the marshal. He tells Tracy that he deserved to die. They make their way to Portland. Tracy approaches Kate's house. Kate's sister sees him and motions for him to come in. Tracy and Kate are together again. As they sit by a window enjoying a cup of tea, Kate's sister sees a large group of lawmen approaching the house. She warns Kate and Tracy. Tracy hides on the roof while the lawmen search the house. The lawmen enter the house with their guns drawn. They demand that the ladies tell them where the outlaws are hiding. One of the deputies shouts from upstairs, come up here quick, they all run upstairs. Tracy drops down from the roof. He goes to the front door and shouts, hey they're getting away, hurry down here before we lose them, all the lawmen run downstairs thinking that they have finally caught the outlaws. As the posse rides away on a wild goose chase Tracy and Kate run into the woods. Tracy and Kate go north and find a new town being built. They meet the town leader and offer their help and support. All is going well until one day while Tracy is on the top of new building being constructed. He can see a large group of men riding toward the town. He senses danger and climbs down the ladder. He tells the mayor that there is going to be trouble. He tells him to take Kate into the barn and keep her safe. Tracy grabs his gun and runs into the cornfields. He opens fire on the posse to distract them away from the innocent people in the town. The posse blindly returns fire into the cornfield. They haven't spotted Tracy yet but they keep shooting. Tracy stands up so they can see him. They charge into the cornfield as Tracy taunts them. They finally hit their target and Tracy falls to the ground. While mortally wounded he calls out to Kate. She hears his final words, Kate, I love you. The posse and the newspaper reporters are excited about the suit out. The manhunt for Harry Tracy has finally come to an end. His body is put on display while photographs are taken. Some souvenir hunters cut locks of his hair off to remember him by. And so this true love story comes to an end and Kate has lost the love of her life. She will return to Portland, Oregon with only memories of this once in a lifetime adventurous love affair. If you liked this video please click the subscribe and like buttons and thanks for watching.